Last video, I was using a grittier, slightly more realistic Sonic model from Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and today is barely any different because I'm also using a model from Nintendo, of all people. Plenty of people actually prefer the depictions of the entire Sonic cast in a Mario Sonic Olympic Games title from 2016. Do you know how weird that is? People love Rio Shadow, Rio Sonic, Rio Knuckles, but you know who seems to love Nintendo Sonic models a little bit more than everybody else? Sock Tiger, because they also were the person that made that Brawl mod I mentioned. They are the magician behind the magic that is these model imports. One of my favorite parts about how much effort goes into these model imports is always the ability to rig the models, because in that cutscene right there before all the wolves start attacking me. You actually got to see proper expression in his face, and it looks so good with Rio Sonic's very soft and like circular depiction. One thing that's really easy to tell about Nintendo's depiction of Sonic is they love making him soft and circular, and I think that fits. Even Brawl Sonic that's like fairly sharp and edgy, he's still got a round baby boy face. Like his eyes are so circular, the shapes are super defined on this model. Things don't feel very uh rough or rigid around the edges. And yes, I'm once again using Reanimated Frontiers for anybody asking. Sock Tiger said themselves they see this combination of mods to be the definitive version of how to use Rio Sonic. But that's not necessarily enough content to warrant its own entire video. There are so many customization options for this. If you want, you can use blue eyelids or flesh eyelids. Now, I'm gonna be upfront. There's nothing more I hate than seeing classic Sonic with flesh eyelids. But there is something about the colors that are on Rio Sonic that actually make them bearable for me. They don't look like weird meat flaps. Oh, by the way, I kind of punked you too, because that's right, they went the extra mile and actually edited the in-game DLC slots to give you eight different skins to choose from. Eight. It's one thing to give us configuration options, but adding it into the menu, again, as if this was just some casual DLC that dropped. Oh boy, do I love it. That makes me deviously rub my hands together. It's like those uneaten leftovers in the fridge. It's also impressive to see all of these skin options, accessory options, texture options, because my dude, you have to rig all of that. And rigging is not fun, I can speak from experience, but the least we can do is have some raw ass McDonald's Sonic on our timelines. What a damn treat, and this isn't even the $5 combo pack value. Don't fuck with me. I make minimum wage. Besides the production value just being really nice for having it in the, in the menu, you're also able to conveniently switch out whenever it's something in the menu and not just a customization option. So you don't have to keep reopening the game over and over just when you want a little bit of an outfit change. It's wonderful. I love this cell shaded attempt because there are multiple cell shader Sonic mods, but this one looks like it's actually attempting to be somewhat similar to the official 2D artwork made for Frontiers with their like aggressive black shading and painterly style. And holy shit, does it work on a rainy chaos island with how dark and bleak all the colors are here? <laughs> he looks so good with that side jumping animation, oh my god. And casual reminder, this was just supposed to be a Wii U model import, but nah, we got a whole ass cell shaded model that's emulating 2D artwork in a 3D space for free, my guy, for free. I was gonna enable the daytime only code for this so that you could see the models properly, but he looks so damn good with all these dark colors. I feel like it would be a crime at this point to take it off and ruin the vibe, you know? The way Rio Sonic's quills are, are just so big and chonky. I love how this animation looks. Wow, they lean real heavy into the 2D aesthetic for this. The mouth is a drawn-on asset that's kind of like clipping outwardly, almost like some messy line art. I know it's gonna look so raw taking down Fortress. It's
it's so easy to see him. Like, the visual clarity is something that I can't underappreciate, genuinely. And even when the colors get cold and dark, it still stands out. It kind of honestly reminds me of Persona 3's artwork with the blacks and the blues standing out so prominently with one another. The imagery is so crazy right now. That- oh my god! I feel like I'm playing an unreleased Storybook Sonic PS2 game with this kind of cel-shaded aesthetic. I'm just getting heavily reminded of, like, Sly Cooper. Definitely the reason that I decided to use a Brawl Sonic mod before was because I wanted to be reminded of his past and what that aesthetic used to be. From the looks of it, this aesthetic mod was just supposed to emulate the 2D promotional artwork, not necessarily trying to make me feel even more nostalgic. Oh wow, that works in the cutscenes too! The rigging on this is so impressive. This is a million times more than what I did for my Dread mod. I did the barest of bare minimums with my Knuckles the Dread mod. This is exactly like the level of quality I look for when I'm trying to make like a definitive mod list. Anyways, you're donezo, child. It's even like Rio Sonic's body shape is more accurate to his overall proportions. I feel like when he's posing with his air tricks, it looks a lot more accurate to artwork. As much as I love it, I can't let Cell Shaded Sonic take all the glory right now. With a mood change means a model change. Oh wow, he's got more sass in his eyebrows now. What a model. Is there a better customization option to choose than the World Ring from Secret Rings? I don't know. I just thought the colors in this scene really reflected my boy back when he was in the land of the Arabian Nights. I think one of the coolest parts about this is that it actually has reflective textures on the inside. You can see the horizon and the sunrise in the ring. Huh. I feel like I recognize that. Is that- is that some kind of arch? Huh. How do you even get the game to agree with your custom material? You can barely get Sega to agree with themselves internally! Would this pose even be 60% as cool as it is if it weren't for the goddamn wedding ring on this man's hand? He is married to life itself. When you draw Sonic, you're typically gonna start with circles, and one of Rio Sonic's greatest qualities is again how circular and shape-oriented they are. You can't hit something this raw with rigid quills. They need to be curvy and move in a circular manner. This man is meant to curl in a ball, let him curl in a ball. My dude looks tough as fuck right now. Who told him that he could have so much swag by just putting a hat over his ear? It's crazy how different the OVA is and how it just refuses to leave our consciousness. It is in every Sonic fan's head rent-free. By the way, I'd like to contribute at least 30% of why everybody loves OVA Sonic's favorite clothes to the fact that, yes, Infinite was the designer. Let's go, boys! Infinite mentioned! These clothes are so goofy, I could never imagine a single other fictional character, humanoid or furry, to ever wear these. And yet they just work. I'm surprised how well they work with the art direction of Frontiers, like Alien World. It's like they're leaning super heavily into realism fantasy, and these crazy-ass clothes are contrasting it in a way that I just f*** with. I feel like I'm messing with the natural order of things by letting Sonic wearing these goofy-ass clothes look cool. What? These goofy-ass homing attack loops look like something OVA Sonic would actually do with this after image just to be obnoxious. <laughs> I can just imagine him getting hits in and just striking a pose every time and like blowing a raspberry at Eggman or something. <laughs> Something that I uber appreciate about this is that among the included outfits was one of the ones that Sonic would actually wear in the Olympic Games because we can't let you forget that one of the most fire costumes comes from a spin-off sports game. Yeah, I know, Sonic. It's weird, isn't it? But it's not even that out of place? Because my dude is athletic as hell and he's gonna be running around anyway. I've got no issues with this drift. If anything... It just looks like he's running around his training grounds right now. Come to think of it, there are only a few things Sonic hates. 
oppression and not looking fresh as fuck. Thankfully, with, with this customization option, we can fight both problems. What a simple palette swap that is honestly irreplaceable. You can see this from a mile away. I'm kind of sad that we didn't get more spin-off games because it was a perfect opportunity to really play around with Sonic's fashion sense. I also love how the soles of the shoes look too. Even with just a simple costume change, my boy looks so athletic. Like his base design is cool and all, but his base form doesn't look nearly as nimble as he does with this fit. Just another day in the office. They didn't just stop at one cause either, which I think is really cool. In general, I'm becoming a believer that Sonic can wear shirts. There was actually a Jack-specific Olympic Games Sonic set where him and Shadow were wearing shirts. I always thought that looked weird and lame. Whenever I seen the Olympic Games themselves, like on the Wii and stuff, I always thought it was weird and lame when they had to wear outfits, but I don't know, I kind of dig this. And because it's such an easy thing to implement too, you just need like a texture on on the shirt or something, so we get like five or six different variants of the shirt outfit, which is so cool. You can even upload your own custom one. That is supported in this. Sock Tiger wasn't greedy, they're like, hey, you can pitch it too if you want. Now what kind of a guy would I be if I didn't contribute to the mod? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The Joe Rogan Podcast is now in Sonic Frontiers. And you can only get it with the exclusive- He's not happy about this. And you can only get it with the exclusive Rio Sonic DLC. Now in stores. By the way, all it took was editing one image file and then repacking it into the game. Alright, I think my work here is done. Just the solo Rio shoes go pretty hard. It's kind of like Sonic and his writer's shoes. They're nice and chonky. They've got unique soles. The amount of customization you get out of this. We're just playing a dress-up Flash game disguised as a gigantic open-world action game at this point. You wouldn't even know this is from an underwhelming-ass Olympic sports spin-off game. Tyson Hess did such a bang-up job with the movie design that I find myself actually really wanting elements of the movie design to be a part of his regular design. Like, I'm not saying he needs to update his shoes whatsoever, but like, the Puma shoes in a normal game should just be a regular DLC option like the Adventure shoes, because these are so clean. The little white stripe almost looks like a bandage on the Puma shoes. And I have to do the rail launch test with these bad boys. <laughs> Like, I can totally imagine even movie Sonic scaling Asura to kick his ass. And the way he has, like, this Sonic X running upwards animation, too. It just really unifies Sonic as a concept. They've even got those, like, little red tag things up the back, too. That's so cool. I need a Sonic boom check. Look at the stretch on these bad boys. And of course I gotta do this for every pair of kicks I love. Give them the ready, set, go treatment. Another thing I'm in love with about Sonic's design is when he's at certain angles where you can't see his mouth at all. And you don't really know what he's thinking, but he still looks fierce anyway. This is right here is a pose that I could definitely see movie Sonic pulling off in, like, the third act. Even though it was just a funny little April Fool's game, exclusive to Steam because they couldn't get enough funding for a port. I'm obliged to ask where the Murder of Sonic DLC was, man. We already established with the OVA costume that having the singular hat over the ear looks so clean. Too clean, even. Because bitches can't stop talking about it. They can't stop putting in their designs, man. There was already a Murder of Sonic costume that came out, and I feel like the materials were a lot more akin to what you would see in the games. I think, for the most part, it was using, like, altered Sonic Forces avatar items, which made the materials and clothing look a lot more in tune with, like, the current art style. It looks cool, and it's great that we can have it on the Rio model, but being able to, like, see the threads on his coat, that kind of feels more like a Brawl Mario thing than a Rio Wii U Sonic thing, in my opinion. Even though I like the other Murder of Sonic costume a little bit better, there is so much value in all of these outfits being in the same mod, so you don't have to continuously keep changing and switching. Holy sh**! Well, I thought this was a graphical glitch for a second, so like, full disclosure, I know what this skin was before I selected it. I selected it intentionally because I knew it was going to go hard. The effect is so believable that I like, got jump scared, and I thought my game was visibly glitching until it loaded, and then I realized, wait, no, it's just the goat! 
I feel like one of the first things modders did is they removed the cyber ghost effect from Tails, Knuckles, and Amy, because, you know, you kind of just want to play as the regular-ass Tails, Knuckles, and Amy you've always known. But I've learned to appreciate over time that the cyber forms look raw, and they're going to be so unique compared to any future Sonic game that comes out after this. The fact that this Cyber Sonic in particular has a black shade, though, it kind of reminds me of this Dark Ult from Smash. It also reminds me of, like, the Timeless River from Kingdom Hearts. It's so stylized. The transparency so you can see the background behind him is so cool. Being able to see the ground and the land and all of the background items behind him through him is one of my favorite parts of the Cyber Ghost effect in this game. It's just so raw having a translucent character that can still hit like a truck when they need to. And by far one of my favorite parts of this is the Pac-Man eyes. It fits the black and white Timeless River aesthetic so well. It makes him look like he was invented in the 50s. And since his pupils are purely black, it looks almost like his classic form more than his modern form in, in certain ways. One of the upsides to the Cyber characters is it doesn't matter how dark it gets, you're still going to be able to see them pretty well. Damn, boy! Let's be honest, if you had any intention at all of being the definitive skin mod for this game, you might as well give up. It includes not just Sonic, not just Timeless River Sonic, not just Murders of S Sonic... Sonic, but it also includes Scourge. Similar to the Murder of Sonic model, there was already a Scourge mod, but it didn't really tickle my fancy. I wanted something that wasn't just kind of a recolor of the regular Frontiers model, which, you know, is silly to say, considering that Scourge is literally just a recolor of Sonic, canonically. But I don't know, I just feel like he deserved some visual distinction other than Jacket and Green. He's so brutal. I've really got to admire how the scar was done, too. The way his eyebrows are rigged makes his angry expression look so much more like actual Scourge. I do enjoy that, like, the vinyl flame part is more sparkly because of the material. That's really cool. Ooh, it's like I'm actually just evading all those individual bullets with pure expertise. I'm so glad that it's ver this version of Beetle and not the shit-ass normal version. <laughs> I am so happy. I'm so happy that this mod actually has real time cutscene support. Oh, what a boss. Look at him go, especially after that aerial flip. <laughs> What a perfect chain! Wow, I wasn't expecting very much from the writer's one? I guess it's just the different proportions of his head, the length of the quills, the fact that Sonic's torso that looks more like his lanky writer's version. This looks like the real deal, but modernized in the current style. Goodbye, friend. With everything you've seen, did you really think there wasn't gonna be a super form? Dude's got the extremely mean eyebrows. These aren't just curves anymore. These are straight up sharp edges. He's got the adventure quills. And he is much shinier than usual. Look at the surface of this man's. Some might say, you need stats on par with a super form to beat these Final Horizon Guardians. But somehow, even that isn't enough! So I've got to go even further beyond to the Super Sonic 2 form. When you evolve even further, that's when you earn the straight up quills that you see all the time nowadays. You can have your cake and eat it too with both forms, and this truly makes it feel ascended. And that's all it takes, baby. Like, when I drop out of my ascended form into regular form again, I can see all the shiny textures and glossy and penetrable aura drops, and then I just go back to being immortal. It's sick. But what if I'm greedy, and I want to get even more powerful? <laughs> there are individual skins for whichever ascended form you prefer. 
Oh boy, the chunkiest of them all in the update. Aw, oh, how cute, he's still standing. It wasn't enough for Sonic to have accessories, a cell shader skin, a holographic skin. It wasn't enough for him to have eight costumes, all those accessories, a brand new model. No, we needed to give Scourge his own alt as well. Yeah, this is just normal evil Sonic from before he became Scourge. So you can get down like that too if you want. You know how this goes. Just because I've shown you Hyper Sonic and Super Sonic 2, that doesn't mean we're over yet. But I want a place to test my true capabilities. <laughs> Talk about a scene. So, for all you Sonic X enjoyers, you now get to see more than one scene of your favorite boy. And he actually gets to display power this time. Get out of here. Get crushed. End his life. How fitting! <laughs> that the most violent QTE in the game, question mark, was done by Dark Sonic. Oh, with the moon in the background? The real moon, by the way. Ooh, yes, I got it! That's one of the only times I've ever got the full parry on that move. Finally, with the blood dripping everywhere too, it's so edgy. The Dark Sonic fans are squealing and kicking their legs around like schoolgirls right now. Who do you think you are? Exactly. Because you're not the final boss. I think that's someone else right now. Goodbye. Oh, that multi-punch is so easy to imagine with this character model. It fits so well. Every single aspect of this mod has something to customize or something to expand on. Even Scourge, who at face value should literally just be a skin, and not actually just the whole ass character, but even he gets the dignity of a different skin for himself. And that's not the last of Super Sonic 2, either. This is Eclipse Sonic, and it is completely original, from what I understand. The shader on this is so unique. I kind of wish actual Super Sonic 2 did something like this. But that's how the cookie crumbles. Woo! That was tight! Speed break! Every single drop of all you got Every single drop of all you got Every single bit of all you have Every single bit of all you have Feeling good!